We call to order the uh, regular meeting of the Berwick Planning Board for Thursday, August the 1st. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We have with us tonight member Sean Winston to my left and to my right, Nicole Fecto and Michael LaRue. Um, our first order of business will be public comment. Anybody have anything uh, to do with the planning board work or just good news in general will always be appreciated. <laughs> A lot about good news in general, but uh, it's fine. a lot of people accuse me of being a bearer of bad news, but... Um, Here's your chance to redeem yourself. <laughs> it, it, it's uh, public service some announcements. Um, first, again, is to plug the comprehensive plan. As uh, we mentioned this last meeting, as we're going to be mentioning it you know, again and again, as we're still looking for volunteers to help us fill out the committee. As uh, we've been working with James, he has a steering committee more or less in place. Um, I know that we're looking to start meeting in the next couple of weeks and um, to, to get things going is again you know no matter what your interest is if you're interested in the future of Berwick come and participate you know is whether it's cultural heritage or the environment or the development is we can find a place to use your expertise and, and even if you don't have any expertise we can use your general knowledge is, is uh, this is something that we want everybody in Berwick to be involved in so if anybody's interested you no know, contact the planning office and James Bellissimo and um, the second announcement is uh, this Saturday <coughs> I was told I could hold a prop up is uh, we're having uh, first of our uh, music festivals is uh, this Saturday from uh, 5 to 8 p.m. is uh, is open to the public coming down enjoy yourself is gonna be plenty of good music and good times is from 5 to 8 p.m. and we're having another one on August 24th thank okay. you very much thank you and what one other note uh, we have a vacancy on the planning board for, so for all of you at home who know you could do a better job if you were just here than we're doing, <laughs> here's your chance. Contact James and you'll be able to tell us how to do it right. Uh, our next order of business will be approval of the minutes from the July 18th meeting. I didn't find any, anything. I was not here that night. I did not find any mistakes in the well, there you as go. written. Nice job, James. Mm -hmm. Yes, I also commend James, and I move that we approve the minutes from Thursday, July 18th, as written. I'll second. Uh, uh, we take the vote. Uh, all in favor? Thank you. All right. Uh, our next order will be a public hearing uh, for the conditional use application for sawmill and professional office 537 Portland Street, Doucette Excavation, Doucette Forestry. Um, do we have any members of the public here to comment? Okay. Uh, we will close the public hearing. <laughs> um, we'll now consider the application of Doucette Forestry for a sawmill and professional office 537 Portland Street. Mr. Town Planner? Yes, well, I don't have anything new to add. Um, okay. You have my memo from the last meeting, um, except that you have um, had deliberations and discussions regarding um, the sawmill versus um, solid waste, and you made a determination from a land use standpoint that it is a sawmill, um, which I'm fine with. So beyond that, I think that um, any you, if you have any questions of the applicant at this point, that's where I would head, um, and I'd be happy to assist you in any issues that they have. Right, uh, could the applicant come forward? Thank you. <coughs> Good evening. Uh, my name is Brian Nielsen of Adder Engineering, representing Travis Doucette of Doucette Forestry Products. I think it would be helpful at questions. this point. Um, 
whether you or, <coughs> or Travis Doucet, to explain in some detail the nature of the operation that's going to take place out on 537 Portland Street. Sure, Travis. Might, might be better for job than me. Mr. Doucet. I'll set up the plan. Hi, my name's Travis Doucette. Nice this is to see you guys again. Um, Look under tab like so four. So basically, like I said before, at the, bottom, um, at the back of it, it's stuck there. I collect trees from tr different various tree companies that cut them down in people's yards or wherever, and I bring them back. I cut them to length. The good ones get sawn on a sawmill, and the rest of whatever is left over, the piece or whatever, is either turned into firewood or grinded into mulch on site, and I'd like to sell it at the property. Right. Um, and you're, you're currently doing this? I am. And what's the I location where you're currently doing this? It's across the street behind Mix. All right, on Portland Road? Yeah, directly across the street. Okay, and uh, the number of employees you expect? Um, well, there will be, there's going to be five to six total. All right. And that would be one person in your office? There should, yes. Right. And that person will, will be selling material or will there be other people selling the material? Well, there's always going to be two people there working. Okay. And so there'll probably a, be a girl in the office, you know, for bookkeeping and such. And then when somebody comes in that wants something, they'll have to be loaded with a machine, a loader or something like that. So we'll have, a, you know, a guy, you know, a man there okay. who's already working that can load them. And then, you know, we'll, the girl in the office do the billing. So. And, and how far from the office building do you expect the sawmill to be? Um, well, the, the office is going to be attached to the shop where we showed okay. you, and the sawmill is going to be out back. So we didn't walk down that way, but it's going to be a little way. It'll be a ways. 50 yards, 100 yards, I mean, roughly? Uh, yeah, probably 50 yards at least. Uh, and will, will you have people at the sawmill and the grinding operation also? Yes. All right, so that would be the other two or three people who might be there? Yes. And your hours of operation? Six to five in the morning, during Monday to Saturday. Okay. Um, any other questions? Possibly open in the morning on a Sunday. If it's tough to get people to work on a Sunday, no, but if I hope business the, is good and during and the Memorial Days and things like that when people want loam and mulch, okay. you know, things like that. So, and that's another thing. It's stump is part of the tree. So when I go pick up logs, a lot of times to get the logs, I have to take the whole tree, which includes the stump a lot of the time. So we bring that back. That gets processed. It gets sheared up. That gets grinded, and then the stuff that falls <laughs> off the dirt, you know, that will get piled for a season, and then we sift that out as for screen loam and things like that, and which will also sell on site. Right. Uh, Michael, any questions? Nicole, anything? Um, no, I don't. I don't think I have any questions. We don't have any findings of fact or conditions. Well, what I, what I want to suggest we do is that we we vote on to approve the application. It's already been approved. No, not as complete to it, actually approve it. Oh, 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 mm -hmm. approve it. And then, and then the next time we can actually vote on findings, findings and conclusions and, Correct. and Will conditions. Will there be a, another meeting? Um, There's going to have to be because we don't have findings well, of fact or conditions. Well, I don't know if you'll need to be at the next meeting. Yeah. We will get the material yeah. to you. Well, I get the, because I can't extend my closing date. Well, what, what, we, what we will do tonight is vote on whether or not to approve your overall application. Okay. Depending on that vote, you will have your answer as to yes or no. S so the next thing we have to do is just in, in the nature sort of of housekeeping, meaning there's some additional documents we have to take a look at. But the overall question as to whether or not we will approve this, we will decide momentarily. So say it's approval, I have like a piece of paper to show a bank. Uh, not tonight, but that's that's where the findings of fact will come into play, and that's going to be at the next meeting. Um, I can draft them up tomorrow morning, and I can get them to James, but that means um, actually Niles will have to come into the office to sign them if he wanted, if he felt comfortable with that, if this board felt comfortable with it. Pretty straightforward. There's no, no waivers the being hearing. requested, right? I'm no, sorry? No nope. waivers? Nope. Okay. Nope. Um, so, I mean, I can have those by mid-morning tomorrow morning. Which is what I, which is the P, which yes. is what, okay, that's, what that's all I need, yeah. because as long as, my only th problem is I just, 
I feel like they won't give me an extension because there's a couple other people that have. They always want you to feel offers. that. Offers. Well, I know. That <laughs> 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 I have to take the That's good. I that means there's they're good rules. I spent changed. a lot of money to have yeah. the engineer, and so if, I, if they, all they have to say is no, yeah. and then they could take a cash offer. Yeah. Oh, you Those know. people still have to come to the planning. Well, in, in addition to everything else, you're getting some real estate sales tips <laughs> tonight also. <laughs> well, Just touch base with charge, James yeah. mid morning. Um, give me time to. Um, get those wrapped up which should not take me long but okay yeah all right okay Thanks. So well, i mean the closing date is anything? august 15. Yeah. but that's no it seems pretty straightforward be, yeah. okay. so that's my dilemma so okay. so i i will entertain a motion to approve the conditional use application for a sawmill and professional office at 537 portland street portland street or road mm, road street. road okay portland street S or street Either one. Take your pick. <laughs> State aid <laughs> highway. <laughs> so moved. All right. We have a second. Second. All right. All in favor? Any opposed? No. Thank you. You're done. You're approved. Okay. So check with James tomorrow morning. Uh, define mi mid morning. Ten o'clock. Eleven o'clock. Yeah, ten o'clock. Check um, with him at ten. Um, yeah. And I will be down there at 10 to sign them. I'm usually in my office ah, at 7.30, and that's the first thing I'll work on. All right, I will be down there at 10 tomorrow to sign them, and uh, he can come, come right up. Here, okay. All right, I'm going to suggest I can sign that we perhaps. reverse the order of our new business items. I agree. Because I'm going to assume yeah. that the conditional use application for Four Corners Clean will take significantly less time than the one for the fire station. Mm. Sure, this is their initial meeting. Right. Um, and also, um, I did. I think I. Well, I'm. I'm going to yes. make a suggestion, and then I need to ask a few questions of the applicant. Mr. So Chairman. Yes. I'm going to recuse myself for this. Okay. We have a double conflict of interest. A yes. Double. Ooh, double. That's <laughs> quite a conflict. <laughs> we don't get those often. Um, first, I'm going to suggest that okay. that even though the proposed use says home business office. Technically, it doesn't meet the definition, so I think it's probably closer to a professional office or something, you know, uh, uh, what do they call it, back operations office. It, it's not going to make an enormous difference, not going to make any difference at all, um, but just technically, you don't, a whole business office means you've actually got to live in the building, and you're not doing that. So, a small little, not a problem. But there are a couple of questions. Um, that you did not, I guess, three or four that you did not answer. So let me go through them with you. Uh, yes, sir. Can you have step to the podium, please, to answer the questions? Why not? Come say hello to Berwick. <laughs> well, we're on TV, so everybody at home wants to hear it. <coughs> yeah, but you know, I've just been reading about FDR. Those radio chats work really well, too. So sometimes voice is just enough. But let us go for the, for the video age. Um, your name, please? It's Diane Dyer. And you are the applicant for Four Corners Clean? Correct. Tell, me, tell us what you're going to do at the site. Well, it's, it's going to be, I house my, off, my business in my home previous right now, and I gonna, would like to move it next door. That We just purchased that building next door to, you know, get it out of my home and to have an office there. Right. So you, you're not going to change the, the building? You're not adding or taking anything down? It's, Absolutely It's going to be not. essentially the same... Same building structure. it is, mm -hmm. I think you're going to extend the driveway a little bit? Yes. All right, but essentially it's the same pretty much operation. Correct. All right. There's some questions here that are having to do with waivers. Uh, I'd like to just go over them, and then I'm going to move that uh, to the extent that there are waiver requests that we, can we grow it on them tonight? Certainly, if you feel I'm comfortable gonna, doing I'm that, absolutely. I'm going to suggest that we, we vote on those waiver requests. So the first one is... Um, one of the requirements is that you have a topography indicating contours at intervals of not more than two feet in elevation unless otherwise specified by the planning board. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess that you'd like to have us waive that requirement. Am I right? Yes, I am. Am I not? Yes, you are. I thought you might agree with yes. me. Um, <laughs> you know, as, as you said, it's, it's exactly the same building. There are no changes. There's no reason to go through all of that. Mm -hmm. um, at this time, uh, I would 
entertain a motion that we grant the waiver request on the topography indicators? Anybody? I'll move that we grant the waiver for the topography. All in favor? All right. Uh, the next one is on-site soil investigation, which meets all requirements of the land use ordinance. I'm going to suggest you'd like us also to, to waive that requirement. Yes. I thought you might. Good. <laughs> um, can I get a, a motion to grant that waiver? I'll make a motion. Second. All in favor? All right. Um, and the, uh, the next is a landscape plan showing location type and approximate size of plantings and location and dimensions of all fencing and screening. Um, I will also entertain a, a motion that we waive that requirement since it's an existing building. It's presently a residential building, as I understand. I'm, I'm pardon. D do, is there a residential? Do people live in the in the no, duplex? There's nobody living there. It's not a rental unit whatsoever. It's never been. It has been. It has been. It so was when was the last time it was lived in? Do you know roughly? Um, a couple weeks ago. All right. So recently. Okay. All right. Good. Um, again, I will entertain a motion that we grant that. I'll make. A, I'll move that we grant uh, the waiver for the required landscape plan. I'll second. All in favor? And finally, um, other stuff that we're supposed to ask you for that we really don't need to ask you for. We'll we'll entertain a motion to to grant materials to satisfy section nine point one point one as though as they apply. I'll uh, make a motion for that. Second. All in favor? All right. So we're now at the point when we can uh, entertain a motion to call this application complete. That is correct. Um, if you do I have such a motion? Um, yes, I will make a motion to consider the application for four corners clean on Route 236 as complete. Okay. Second. I'll second. All in favor? All right. Now what do we do? Uh, set the date for a public hearing and a site walk if you feel necessary to visit the site. Probably worth taking a look. What It'll be a nice sunny afternoon. Uh, two weeks from today at 530. That work? That works. Including the recusers and the applicants. I'm going to be there. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it, with two weeks from tonight, uh, August 15th at 530 at, at the site. Okay. All right. Wonderful. Thank you. We're Thank done you. with you. <laughs> for this evening. <laughs> I'll even throw in one of those just for the same price. He doesn't get to do this very often, if you couldn't tell. <laughs> All right, now let's get down to the next order of business. The um, fire station at 26 Wilson Street. Conditional use application. Uh, this is the formal application. We've had an informal workshop on this subject some time ago. Um, how do we want to proceed? Gentlemen, who, who wants to present on behalf of the conditional use application? Can we need, James, we need to have the screen brought down, I think. Oh boy. There's a presentation. Oh, wow. gonna, are we going to have to move? As I see. Oh. Yeah. Let me move Paul. See, I'm too short. I couldn't do that without standing on a chair, so. <laughs> I mean, what? is that the, the next step? <coughs> yep, that's James, we don't have a power screen. That's like an extra 400 bucks. Or oh. Disappointing. How does it stay down? You gotta like it doesn't feel like it's gonna. Hey. It does? Look at that. Look at that. It's hard to do. It's very hard to do. I don't know if it'll... I just have the magic touch tonight, James. So you want to use this mic? Okay. Or okay. If I can, okay. Oh, well, yeah, if you want to go over there. I don't know if my mouse will... Uh, yeah, I think it, it, it gets t a little bit too far. Sure. Is that good? Yeah. Yep. Beautiful. Look at it. Okay, great. All right. Uh, have everything now. I'm uh, Andy Highland at uh, Port City Architecture, and uh, we have been hired uh, along with uh, Blaze Engineering. I have Todd Gammon with me. 
uh, to design and uh, the new uh, fire station for Berwick. So uh, just I think you've, we've been uh, through just kind of on some sketch plan review for you before. Uh, just uh, getting you just going through the basics here. This is the existing police station uh, in town here and the field that's behind it. So the proposal and the voters uh, when they voted for it last fall uh, wanted it with the police station. So we took a look in and, uh, and we're gonna create a public safety complex. So this is uh, down below us here is the uh, uh, kind of really public entrance to the police station. Uh, there's a residential building right behind it. Uh, what we like to do, so we, took, uh, we started to take a look at the site. We talked with the chief on where the calls come in and the calls go out. Uh, one of the pieces on this one was really getting out to Sullivan Street. So we, uh, we took uh, and we were gonna uh, enlarge the path, that the walking path that was going through there that used to go to the school and have created, uh, it's the apparatus uh, drive. It's a long one too, uh, 300 and some feet. Maybe it's off my map right now. Uh, <clears throat> but that'll get that gets out to Sullivan Street and then uh, a small road back up to I believe that's Kelly is that right Logan Logan I'm sorry uh, Logan. Uh, Street uh, up in the back here so these two uh, avenues right here this would be really kind of where the apparatus and fire and maybe future EMS vehicles uh, travel in and out uh, personnel would uh, would travel also maybe in this area. Then we have some parking for a call company back here and for staff. And then uh, again, the public would just stay kind of on this side. So we'd have traffic segregated between public and private use. Uh, this, the front portion here is uh, really administrative wing. Uh, there's a meeting room here that might also be able to be used uh, by the town uh, and, uh, and also by the police department. One of the other pieces of this was uh, uh, turning the old gym. They wanted to turn that into a sally port, the police. So we're gonna put a few uh, end walls on that, uh, create um, a trench drain in the middle of it and an oil water separator and allow, that'll uh, hold probably about six uh, uh, cruisers inside, keep wow. them out of the weather. And, uh, and so that's uh, part of the uh, project as well. Um, and uh, so that's really kind of it in a nutshell as we kind of go around. There's your four uh, large bays, double bays, their drive through. Uh, there's a little mezzanine on the top here. Uh, this is the floor plan of it. Again, the uh, front door uh, coming in, lobby, administration, training room, another conference. These are offices. This is uh, bunk rooms in the back and, uh, and, and bathrooms. And as uh, we go through, I mean, uh, although there's a good call company here, the trend is becoming uh, really professional staff. Uh, you know, people just aren't living and working in the same town as much as they used to. I think the average age uh, of a volunteer is probably in their 50s or something right now. So. Uh, so we're kind of preparing the town for maybe it'd be some professional staff that could live and, uh, and work here uh, in the future. Uh, other pieces of it are, uh, this is uh, the day room and, uh, and uh, eating and uh, the kitchen. And uh, we have a little fitness area in the back. Uh, a big thing now in, uh, in fire station design is really trying to keep the carcinogens and the contaminants out of the living areas. So we have a, a decontamination area to here that you would go in, you can kind of hose or shower off your uh, turnout gear, kind of keep that clean, run it through the washer, and, and so there's a nice separation that way. On the far side of the bays is really storage. And this is some more uh, lockers. The uh, volunteers would come in this way, grab your gear, and go out uh, to the uh, vehicles in the in the uh, bays. Uh, so really, that's kind of the uh, that's the I guess summary of the uh, of the proposal. Uh, we also have uh, put in for 
we've our applications in for in DEP. Uh, I think I probably can turn it over to Todd if he wanted to talk a little bit about the site and how we're planning to drain the site, et cetera, all that, all that ex good stuff. I'll be your yeah, yeah be the guy. Like. Uh, <laughs> evening, Todd Gammon, Blade Civil Engineers. So uh, I think Andy covered kind of the site layout for the most part. Here's the site layout and utility plan, like he mentioned. It is a uh, probably almost 430 feet from the the fire station down to Sullivan, so you get a pretty good length. We worked with uh, CMP, the town sewer department, and the Berwick water department. Our connections will come off a 12-inch main there. We've got domestic and fire protection for the building. Uh, we're going to tie into a, a sewer main out into Sullivan and uh, key that up into the fire department. We've got some floor drains. I've worked with the uh, peer review engineer for Berwick on the sewer and, and uh, we're kind of final specking that there's an oil water separator that's going to, uh, the drains there. will discharge that little rectangle he's hovering over now that ties into the sewer. So we've done kind of some due diligence there and, and uh, um, got sufficient capacity for all that. In our CMP meeting, working with an electrical engineer, we also ha are taking off the power pole on Sullivan. We're going to bring in a riser pole along our entrance drive and we've got three light poles along the entrance we've got a couple up in the parking area and okay. a couple one out back and one kind of up towards the logan uh exit that's a it's a drawing further down okay. in, the, in the set but uh to give you an idea we've got a dumpster pad out back uh it's going to be a double dumpster uh full fence enclosure and that will be uh the the police station staff will have the ability to use it as well was the plan so we're going to do a double double size one there um, our transformer right yeah we got a transformer pad and a generator pad to the left of the parking um we're gonna have some bollards set up but um obviously whatever's sufficient to uh, run that in the future i think there's 26 parking spaces shown cited on the layout right now but as Andy mentioned, most of, if there's any public uh, type meetings or whatnot, we've, there's still, there's quite a few parking spaces in front of the police station. They, I think the assumption is they're gonna access the building from the front, park to the south. Um, so the 26 to the north will be for, for staff and other gatherings. Um, obviously you can see, I left the, uh, the outline of the Esterbrook School that'll be demoed. You can kind of see in space where that is in comparison to our layout try to limit the amount of impervious as much as we could. We've got a 20 foot entrance off Sullivan, 20 up to Logan. Um, and then as Andy mentioned, we've got a little drive coming around the police station um, that wraps into the Sally Port with a overhead door in and out and just doing a little bit of sidewalk work in the front, limiting that around the flagpole. Uh, a little bit of landscaping, so I'm showing some foundation plantings and a tree. There's a little bit of, uh, there's a few deciduous trees or uh, coniferous trees out in front of the police station. Uh, most of that is all uh, developed land for the most part. There's very little w wood clearing. Everything's mowed out there, as you probably know. Um, so the best part about the footprint is there's as limited as impact as we could. We do have some wetland impacts. Uh, you can see the wetland symbol to the to the left there near Sullivan that so as we're crossing I am matching into the 10 foot wide path so we're really only widening that uh, 10 feet in that area that was already a gravel path up through and then uh, even the building is on top of the park the uh, basketball court and there's a lot of impervious out there uh, and then of course we're demoing a whole building and a roof so there's uh, a lot of uh, uh, compensation in terms of uh, elimination of some impervious and creating what we need out here and that'll just be reseeded right there yep. yes that's all gonna be grass yep even though it's, nothing's shown there it'll be the it's gonna have to get graded up, okay uh, yeah. and so we're gonna also try to use that's good fill okay. up there to use that for the site itself as well yeah if you want to go to the next plan Andy I can so here's the grading plan you can see some of the proposed oh, yeah. grades so ideally since the Estherbrook school was brought in um it was built it was built on some pretty good fill fortunately uh so we had quite a few test pits and borings done with a local geotechnical company evaluated the report there are some challenges to the site but a lot of the fill is um my plan is to cut 
under the Esterbrook School, regrade that. We're going to actually make use of that fill. And uh, because I have a fill slope coming in from Sullivan as we're accessing, uh, obviously it's a little steeper up to Logan, so we're trying to uh, balance the finished floor grade of the fire department with not too steep from Sullivan, and but high enough where it's you know challenging grades up top there. So uh, what you're seeing to the south is an MDEP environmental protection under drain soil filter. It's a dual filter. It's treating um, about 75 percent of the site. Everything gets there for the uh, majority of the impervious area. Uh, surface swales and cross culverts come into some four bays. Essentially what that is is uh, it's an under drain. You get some perforated pipes, some storage capability in there, outlet control structure, slows the flow for the two year, 10, 25, 100 year storm events. Um, so we're restricting any peak rates below what is getting to that channel, which gets to Wilson now. Um, and Oops, sorry. the uh, you know obviously got to match out in front where the we're connecting to the impervious of the parking for the police station and and the walking ways, uh, but trying to limit as I mentioned the woods as best we can the the tree clearing and the wetlands. As Andy mentioned, we have four permits we're getting. Number one is a MDP stormwater permit, um, which is triggered for greater than one acre of mm -hmm. impervious area. Uh, we're getting a MDEP Tier 1 NRPA wetlands disturbance permit. We have just over 10,000 square feet associated with the entrance drive uh, just north and south of the path uh, where the, the Sullivan entrance is. Uh, we have uh, what's called a permit by rule, which is the proximity of the filter to the stream that's shown in kind of a, a darker width down to the south, uh, yeah, that. Um, and we're also getting an Army Corps Category 2 permit, which is associated with wetlands and uh, tree clearing and uh, some of the standards by which the, you know, the, the design was done for the drainage meets both MDEP and Army Corps, specifically where the stream is, that's a 42 inch culvert, it's embedded. Natural stream substrate is actually placed inside the culvert to mirror what would be done. Obviously, those culverts are replacing existing culverts, so it's fairly minor exercise because everything was prior disturbed. Um, so there is a culvert under there right now? Yep, there's huh. a culvert in the stream. Somewhat clogged up. Yeah, yeah. interesting. Um, actually, both places where you can see, there's also one at the entrance to the Sullivan, so there's three, yeah, that, that, cross the, seen, three yeah. that cross the path right now. Yep. Okay. So I'm matching those locations. Obviously, we can't reroute the location of the stream, but keeping uh, as much distance as we can and everything's really have you know surface whale circumnavigating the whole uh, the whole thing so if you want to go to the the next one's the electrical uh, gives you a little maybe a little harder to see but so there's three uh, light poles the entrance a few up on the parking and then uh, one behind the fire station and one up towards Logan also using making use of wall packs on the building obviously but really limited <coughs> nature for the size and scope of this for 10 acres um, and um, yeah Andy mentioned the police improvements and not sure what the next okay. sheets were Andy All right, yeah so we're bringing in new uh, fiber into the police station and gonna reroute there uh, electrical which right now comes off the Esterbrook school so we're going to bring that in from school street Todd you've got a schedule on there for the lighting have you got I can't recall did you provide a cut sheet or anything showing that they're full cutoffs or anything like that yeah I, I don't think uh, Tim Matthews the electrical engineer did this he's got a lot of detail he's only provided that one yeah. plan Andy yeah he's I got all the details of the ducts we are using cutoff fixtures standard ones 20 foot poles can we just get the detail on that so that we have it in the yeah room. we'll give you a cut sheet yep it's real okay. important lately around here okay <laughs> dark sky <laughs> okay the picture cut off yeah i mean if you want to email it to me that's fine yeah you i can send you a pdf <laughs> 
anybody into culvert <laughs> details, <laughs> yeah, manhole details. details? Okay. Yeah, yeah I think that mostly covers it. Okay. Happy to take any questions. It's a lot of details, you know. Mostly erosion control, pre and post drainage, full full drainage study was submitted. Uh -huh. um, report hydrocad calculations. Um, DEP was obviously a part of part of all that. Uh -huh. Is there any sort of a signal down at Sullivan Street to indicate that the trucks are coming out? We're we're, uh, we're looking at a, uh, a, a a so we we were talking about it and uh, we were running conduits down there bringing power in bringing lights down there so what we're contemplating is at least a warning light yeah, down yeah, there and i mean so that, i'm not thinking stoplight i was just there's there's the right now light. they had them for school crossing yeah. there were a yeah. couple of mm -hmm. things that so we're trying to maybe use those locations for traffic coming each way and we've talked to the fire department whether it was you know operated when a call comes in or they have or maybe when the doors go up so we're working on that and that's anticipated that we would have that uh some sort of warning uh, light i think so I, gonna, I think I was, yeah, go when, when you were mentioning that india i mean i'd suggest maybe looking at like the lights that um are on actuated on traffic signals mm -hmm. um if you go to some of the cities when there's an actuation and they freeze the lights in a certain position mm -hmm. the traffic lights there's a red, little red light mm. up mm. on the pole, okay. got a little flash as a visual. Um, s look at that, and maybe you could just pop that in a pole on either side of the entrance. I believe there's a strobe on the truck that sets those off. Yes, that's right. Either okay. a strobe or there's some are buttons that are actually. Yeah. Okay. I just know that traffic moves really fast on Sullivan Street, having lived there, yeah. and <coughs> people are. Yeah, seem right. To be in a, just seem to be right in a hurry when they're going right up Sullivan Street. Especially at that little spot by the yeah, by that's, the that's that after the stop. There. It's after yeah. the four-way stop, and yeah. then people are starting to accelerate. Mm -hmm. We absolutely have an opportunity to do, and we're and we're talking with the fire department about how that might operate. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, since they are like Andy mentioned, since they already have the pedestals for the for the school flashers, we were looking to see if those are already wired and how that could interplay. Yeah. Yeah. And our electrical took a look at that. Elevations. Uh, okay. I think that was pretty much. Uh, we have other elevation you know, plan. elevation plans. Looking at uh, a, a kind of hardy plank and brick uh, on the building. So durable materials. Uh, flat roof throughout. The roof on the front will just be overbuilt truss to give it more of a village kind of character w for the folks that are coming up to the building. And, and for uh, our village overlay yes. design standards. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and we're trying to, we're putting in a little tower here to take the, there's a historic bell over by the, the existing station that we're going to relocate. Very cool. Bring a piece of that here. Okay. All right. That's our dog and pony show. Thank you. So, Mr. Chairman, tonight you, um, I think my memo suggests you could find the application complete. Well, the first problem is we can't find the application. Yeah. It's not um, in the book. I, I have, have the old stuff all right we, here. There's an application from April. I have an application. Which was not, it did not appear to, to be complete in April. I don't see anything. You mean as far as an actual checklist? Yes. Ah. Yeah. It's hard to find it complete if I can't find it, as I said. So if it's there, we need to have it distributed to us. If not, it's going to be a little I tough to find it complete if I can't see it. I, use, I usually use the ordinance. That's why I... Uh, yeah, we're not that clever. <laughs> we, 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 use need the actual we use the stuff. checklist. <laughs> you know, and, and I'm a literal kind of guy. Do you want to? Uh, if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna vote on a motion to find an application complete, <laughs> I got to see the application first. That is clearly your choice, Mr. Chairman. And it's a heck of a choice, is it not? <laughs> so that's the choice I'm making, and I'd like to actually see the application. They, I think they submitted the application on the. Yeah, that that's it right there. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so we submitted the application, the two page with checklist. On the first from the from the from first, the first one. meeting. I, s I have it in here from yeah. a from April. So that is the application that you submitted. Yes. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I mean the site plan. At least now I know what we can look at. 
We have all the butter. I mean, if you look at the list, Damn, all those are on the survey. Them. We had everything on the site plan. Uh, yeah, because we had it. requested the extra deed for do you, the. Do you have it? Anything? I don't have a checklist on mine. Uh, well, I have the page two. I mean, I don't right. have any. Yeah, I don't have anything. Yeah, the have check checklist. checklist. Niles, the checklist came like a month ago. We changed the. I understand that, but we're meeting tonight, and we're being asked to vote on whether it's complete, and I haven't seen it. All right. Now. I don't even have the other one. Yeah. Well, the, look under tab six. It is the old one, but which is only. It, it's an unsigned. Yeah, it is unsigned. You're right. I but mean, there's no checklist on it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We it's need unsigned. To see it. There's nothing I mean, checked off or anything. I, I'll it's be more than happy to call the recess and you can make copies and give it to us. But if you want us to vote on the completeness of this application, we're going to have to see it. I don't even have the April one. So. I don't need All right. Well, here's the April one. Yeah, I do have the April one. <laughs> well, we have some time to kill. Um, your your decision on how you want to proceed, but. So you want to see the you want to see the actual I, checklist? I guess I don't see it as my decision. You you're the voting board, but well, no, no. What I what I have offered is you, to call a recess yeah. to have copies of the application made and brought to us, and then we'll be happy to look at it and vote. Yeah, I can make copies right now. But we're not going to vote without looking at it. I mean, that's not going to happen. Yeah. Okay, call a recess. This application. Well, that was what was submitted. That, that's not an application. Uh, yeah, like I've got this. There's no checklist. Signed it. Yeah, so, th so this, this, is, this is the application. That's your two-page application. Right, this is the application. Where, where's the checklist? So the, where che the checklist is um, more an administrative thing on my end that was implemented like a month ago. Well, but the previous applicant, you included it. checklist, yeah. right. Yes, and so is there some reason why this one doesn't? Because this was submitted um, bef before the application was changed. So... I mean, they. I mean, they submitted. There's no doubt that they submitted the required materials. They just don't have the. I mean, the checklist is just. You know, like I can. Like, it's the same. I mean, the checklist is just a reformatted. Well, second we second page. W we know that Nicole wants to know about low impact design. Yeah, I mean that's. Somebody want to tell me about it? What did yeah, you I mean consider? What are you doing? It's on our checklist. <laughs> It's, it's on the, the checklist, it's in the which application. we don't have, <laughs> because apparently it's part of the application. Yeah, so, it, so if we look at that, in the, originally in April, and then the, the current one, yep. you have all the abutters, the site plan required, the, the we have the uh, elevation plan and the floor layout, parking areas, traffic circulation, lighting, landscaping is all in the plans. That's just part of the checklist. I don't think I got a list. I don't have a list of abutters with my yeah. with my thing. It's on the boundary yeah. survey. Okay, but we need a, like a list of abutters. List of abutters. I get it. It, it is on the if you want to look around, but yep. this is a list of abutters. Um, okay. And that's typically what we received as a list. And then the written narrative. I don't know if you yeah. have the two. Do you have the two page letter that was submitted? Um, one from April. I do. Yeah, we have the written. Just outlining yep, the whole we project. We do have the written narrative. Yep. It speaks to the, you know, the. Yep, we have that. Um, and then obviously worked with the municipal and mm -hmm. water and sewer, have the capacity letter. RTI, we prov do you have all the deeds that were submitted? We did, yeah. And we even requested additional deeds, which we did receive. Okay. What we don't have is a written statement documenting proposed low impact design. I know James had mentioned that the yep. stormwater management, I guess, suffices that. I was going to say, I submitted a 30-page yeah. stormwater yeah, yeah. management report. All that is covered in in that which you guys yeah. had copies of so hopefully that, that was that was my th and actually James and I talked about that typically um, we get a low impact design like a written statement it's mm -hmm. part of our application and I wasn't aware that the storm water management takes uh, can take the place of sure. that yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. but this is an unsigned application uh, it, it, for the sake of that and there is no list of abutters <laughs> Sorry. That's expensive. Do you want better, to that better than gavel. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. I'm about to grab the emergency button. <laughs> it's real quiet in here now. It's, it made so much noise. <laughs> So 
So save for a list of abutters, I see. I think <coughs> the application looks, uh, the list of abutters and a signature and a date, the application looks complete. Okay. Would you care to make a motion to that effect? I move that we find the application for the fire station to be located at 20 Wilson Street complete. You could go on to say that for the next meeting that they provide the additional information that you Please do. Please provide the list of abutters um, for the sign next the meeting. Sign the application. List and, and sign the application, yeah. And, and please provide the checklist for the next meeting. James. <laughs> so we can look at it. Do we have a second on this motion? I'll second. All in favor? All opposed? We next ne need to schedule a site walk and a public hearing. Uh, also for the fifteenth. Yeah, I've got. I mean, I've got questions about this, which I guess I can save for the next meeting, or we can talk about it now, so that uh, maybe we because we now? talked about it at the last meeting, and and I don't see any change um, on the site plan at all. So I'm going to once again state that our comprehensive plan, which it is our job to. Uh, to make sure that anything that comes through here jives with our comprehensive plan and the part of this plan which does not is the February 2014th addendum under open space and recreation which says that to make the downtown pedestrian friendly by creating safe continuous routes to from and through downtown where there is a picture of this um, in that space and we talked about making um, sidewalk or pedestrian access along that corridor that's headed to Sullivan Street and up to Logan. And I've had a lot of, <coughs> we discussed a little bit back and forth. Um, since then I've spoken to Chief Roussel in South Berwick. I don't know if you're familiar with their fire location, but it's immediately downtown. It's connected to a community center. It is adjacent to an apartment building. There is a playground on the property. My son was just there two weeks ago taking his driver's test in the parking lot for the fire station. So to say that it's not a pedestrian friendly area is incorrect. The, and I talked to Chief Roussel, he, they've been there for 20 years, they've never had a problem. They want the public there. And I want them to want the public here. And the public wants to be here. We use that space. I walk there constantly and I always see people walking there. Um, I was, uh, and the argument was that, you know, we don't want pedestrians around there. The Berwick Fire Station right now is on our main drag, has a crosswalk that leads directly to it. Like there's a crosswalk that goes right to the front of the fire station. So if, we'd, if pedestrian access was that big of a problem, that wouldn't have been there. Um, so those are kind of, that, that's kind of my thing because that's in our comprehensive plan and my job here is to make sure that our comprehensive plan matches with, with what's brought before us and I don't see that and I, was really hoping to see that update in here. And when I opened up my folder this morning and saw that it wasn't in here, I was pretty disappointed. Because I feel like My recollection is that there was an agreement that you would at least look at that and get back to us with an answer. Yeah, yes. Tom Wright, Chairman of the Board of Selectmen. Um, yes, that was discussed. Mm -hmm. And yes, the comprehensive plan does say make an access. But it does not specifically mention the Estabrook School it shows it on the map yes it says making connected areas around town mm -hmm. downtown one of the suggestions the last time was that we put a sidewalk along that new access road three over 300 feet of sidewalk if i'm going to be spending all that money to put sidewalks in it's going to be up sullivan street so we can get to other areas that need to be connected that was our argument there I understand nothing, that's nothing, your nothing, argument. Nothing, that's nothing, not what the comprehensive in, nothing plan is in this plan <laughs> yeah. precludes us from doing that in the future. There's nothing in there that says that pedestrians are banned from there in the future. What we're looking at is putting this building in in the most efficient way possible and getting it in on the budget that we are bound by. Uh, the town voted to put it there, mm -hmm. and in politics, the last vote counts the most. And the people may have looked at the comprehensive plan and made that recommendation years ago, but the last vote that the Berwick public used was that we wanted to put the fire station there and make a public safety complex. As I said, there's nothing that precludes us from doing this in the future. 
we don't have the money or the time to include that in this proposal at this time well you don't have the time to include a trail <laughs> through this property we don't have the time or the money no we you, don't you first came to us in april by my calculation today is august yep. that's over three and a half months ago yep. you don't have the time to draw on a damn little piece of paper a trail that goes through this Niles, as you know, James is, had. I actually, we have. I mean, there is a proposed one. James sent it to it, me. It <laughs> is, as you know, Niles, putting a trail in more than just drawing a line on a damned piece of paper. You have to engineer it. You have to check with the DEP. You have to do all the same things that you would do. So yeah, is we are trying to get this building in on budget. Is we have very limited funds on what we can do is the you town's, position, to that the town's position is so the police station. that we don't have the money in this budget to do that design at this time there's nothing that precludes us from doing it in the future if the public wants to vote to appropriate that money the money that was appropriated is to put a fire station in and create a public service complex so it's it's the conclusion of the board of selectmen that the land use ordinance is merely guidance when it's convenient to be used is we're not going against the land use ordinance and the you're talking about the comprehensive plan, plan. just a guidance is, when convenient is all right i can throw that right back at this board we're not throwing it's things. Guidance, we're trying to find it's a solution. A guidance. This isn't with an convenience. This can is we talk finding. about if we're going to talk about these types of things can we talk about developments in town and sidewalks that's in our plan that's in our ordinances the apartments on old pine hill road there's no side that we where are you, the sidewalks if you look you can look back since you're so interested in this and review and and see why that waiver was granted but here we have pedestrian access and here this there's part no of pedestrian the access on P old pine I hill Right here, right. What we're talking about, right? No, no, no. We're, no, there is no pedestrian access there. There's and, no, and there's if, no and sidewalks if the town there. Wants and that's a waiver, not what we're looking at. Then maybe you should request yeah. a waiver. Request a waiver, then. It, you you didn't request a waiver, which is why I would like to see the paperwork. But even I voted to find this complete. Mm. The problem is we're either going to get answers or we're not going to get answers. Um, fine with me either way. But if I'm you expect you the, if you expect the people of the town of Berwick to abide by the comprehensive plan in the land use ordinance, then maybe the Board of Selectmen need to do that also. It is, and you're getting answers. You don't like the answers you're getting. No, I'm not getting, getting an answers. answer. The answer I got was you didn't have enough time. Time or money. money. Now, what my question is, if we had enough money to put a Sally port and an oil water separator and all this to the police station, we're here looking at a fire station. So we added a lot of stuff to the police station. No, the, the original vote was for both buildings. It was to build the fire station and renovate the police station. Okay. That was the original vote. Okay. That was thank explained you for, Thank you for clarifying. Time. So it should say fire station and police station renovations on the application then. Because it says fire station, everything here says fire station, and if we have money to renovate a Sally Port and do all that, then um, it's confusing for it for just the fire station. It's confusing. It's confusing so for me. It's you, confusing for other people. Can, can you show me in the comprehensive plan where it says we need to put a trail through the Estabrook property? <laughs> to get this fire station built. No, I can't, but I can say that it's make downtown pedestrian friendly and it's the green spine. And listen, don't act like you've never heard this before. Furthermore, I, it's the responsibility of the board of selectmen and the town manager to make sure that happens. So it's, I don't know, unnerving when the board of selectmen and the town manager, I mean, granted, Steve hasn't gotten up, so I'm not gonna drag you in this you um, by proxy. <laughs> well, you've dragged yourself into it now. But, but it's your responsibility to make sure this happens and you're standing here arguing against it, in which is unnerving it, it, for me that, because I argue, voted for you people to, to, to represent argue that me. that the selectmen have not been doing that would be a misnomer also, is can we talk about expanding the pocket the Salmon Falls that selectmen voted for that. Okay. Put can, that. We talk so we that. can we talk so about we, what we're talking? Can we talk about this We talked year? about we talked about you know Penny Pond and improving that trail. The yep. selectmen approved that, so we are doing that. Okay. Can and we talk about this here though? 
<coughs> is I have been. Okay. But you I'm just saying that we, I mean, the town, the town, they sent out a vote, the town voted, we voted, I mean, this comprehensive plan addendum went in in 2014, so it wasn't years and years and years ago. This is something that we've been working on diligently for years. People and I've been involved in that People want pedestrian access. Find, find a cheap way to do it. Or show us that you've looked at it. Show us that you've looked at it. For Christ's sake. And like It's like, no, can't do it. Yeah. Show us. And, and, and you know, to go back it's to the your comment. It's money. It's our money. To go back to your comment about speaking to the, the chief in South Berwick. Yeah. Is the chief of police in Berwick mm -hmm. and the chief of police uh, so uh, the fire chief in Berwick mm -hmm. both advise against it. So we're listening to our chiefs, okay. not from another town. Well, they advise, I have a feeling they advise against it because there's not enough money. No, they think that it's a public safety hazard. That's okay. what they well, think. Well, then they, they, they have a crosswalk that leads right into their, and right so into the doors get, of the fire station right now. Before it's never bothered anybody up, till, up until What's now. What's that? You'll get us those statements before the next Which meeting? Which statements? Mm. From the fire chief and the police chief saying that they consider it unsafe? Sure, no problem. <coughs> I, have it, I have it on an email already. And it's somebody like, will amend the application so it no longer reads Berwick Fire Station and now reads whatever it is that it needs to read to include the police station? We'll also get that done before the next meeting? Well, the police, I mean, unless the police are expanding, it's renovations it isn't like a conditional use application. No, but I, th I just think it should be clear on here what it is. But. But the name of the project is clearly all of it. It's not, this is not a project just about the fire station, as we've just been told. You know, it's not you, you've just been told. It's been from the very beginning, it has been. You, you're going to argue with me about whether you ought to change the name of the project to be... No, I'm just, I'm just saying We're that... We're going to fight about every damn no. little detail to that point? No, I'm, not, I'm just saying that it has been presented to the public from the start as a new fire station and renovations to the police station. That's fine, just write it All on right. the application. We, we, have, we have found this to be a complete application. We're now in the process of deciding when to hold the public hearing um, and the site walk. So we have a site walk already on the 15th. We right. cannot have two site walks on the same day. All right, so the, what would be the next meeting after that? September. The 5th of okay. September. I'm looking at change. Yeah, September 5th is next Thursday. Yeah, September right. 5th. That's acceptable to all parties, September the 5th? For site walk. For site walk, 530? And a, plant and a public hearing And a after public that? hearing after the site walk. Yeah. Yes, no? But why does it have to be the next meeting? Why can't it be on the 15th? Because we already have a we site walk We already have a site 15th. walk on the 15th. You can't meet. Do you do the site walk the same time you have your regular meeting? We, go, we have a we site walk first, yeah. and then we go and have our meeting afterward. And a lot of us have jobs and are just volunteers yeah, we, here. We, so we, we can't already like, have a meeting yeah, scheduled. Have, yeah. If there are other items to discuss, that would be perfectly fine. Yeah. But we can't do a site walk that night also, because we're already doing another site walk. We could have the public hearing on the 15th. We could have the public hearing on the 15th. We just can't have the site yeah. walk, yeah. which means we can't have a final vote until we have a site walk. All right. Mm -hmm. That's your call. All right. That's my call. Yeah. Public hearing on July the 15th. I mean, nope, excuse August. me, August the 15th. Site walk on September 5th. And the earliest we would then be able to consider a, a vote on the application would be August, would be September the 5th. Mm -hmm. All right. I'll entertain. Oh, will we have another public comment period. Nobody. Um, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Move that we adjourn the uh, Thursday, August 1st planning board meeting. I'll second that motion. All in favor? Good night.